So this might not be an easy video to make, but I do want to sort of explain the um, situation with some of our um, resin 3D parts. So, um, so for regular um, visitors to our website, um, you might notice that some items, um, quite popular items in the 3D printer section have disappeared. Um, mostly like the um, Grey Type Studio stuff. And I did that with, but I was very reluctant to do that because it was extremely popular and they're amazing bits. Um, that's not to say they're gone forever, but um, it was just so hard to keep up with the demand. Um, we've been, we've um, tried to run before we could walk in regards to the printing. Um, originally, I just wanted to print my own unique stuff. And then the opportunity came up to print the um, stuff from St. Decent, which um, was huge for us. That really got us going with the um, resin 3D printer stuff. Um, a lot of the bits there are really popular, and I have no plans ever on um, removing them, um, mainly because they're very limited on um, how many merchants they have, whereas other companies and um, their merchant tiers are open up to a, a lot more people. So, um, with, with the same decent stuff, there's not many alternatives for you guys if we were to stop them, whereas with the other bits, um, there are quite a few. Um, Grey Tide, if you, are, if you are looking for the Grey Tide stuff, we'll have vanished from our site. Um, just Google them and look on the, their website. They've got a whole list of vendors. Um, as I said, they're probably not gone forever. I'll talk about why I've taken them down, I've taken some other bits down, and um, what mistakes we've made and what I've learned from that. So, as I said, we're trying to run before we could walk, so... They were really popular and it was very hard to keep up with demand at one point. Um, obviously I took all all that down over the Christmas period because I knew there would just be too much to come back to. But once they, they came back up again, they were like really popular and I was getting really behind with the amount of orders that had them parts. So we've, we're printing on demand and that's a, one of the biggest issues. So yeah, if you're looking to sell 3D printed parts yourself, then um, obviously I'm um, printing on demand is a way you can do that but I would recommend printing out some stuff in advance um, especially um, if it's pre-supported as well you do need to test the supports that other companies um, do on their miniatures and I don't want to pick on Grey Tide for this they're not the only company who we've struggled with supports for but there's a lot of stuff in their range that I just had to pre-support myself that's not to say their supports are bad but there's so many variables when it comes to 3D printing that they can test their supports in their setup with their temperature, their resin, their printers, etc. And it can be 100% fine. But that's not to say it's going to be fine on mine. So um, if you're just new to printing in general, let alone want to do a print farm, then just be mindful of that because um, you might get failures with certain items. And you might think it's your fault, you might think it's your printer's fault, you might think your bed needs level and or your build plate's warped or something like that, when it could just be that the pre-supported file um, has an issue. And I do want to do a video in the future just talking about all the different issues um, that you can get when printing because I see on the groups every day people have people post failed prints and they'll ask why and I want to do a video sort of um, looking into that just troubleshooting that so everyone's just got like one place they can go to find answers um, but anyway that's another video in the future so yeah um, it was a tough choice taking that stuff down um, due to the popularity. Obviously, um, some of you will be watching this thinking, well, you must be making a lot of money. Why would you take them down? And yeah, um, they were they were really good financially for us. I'm not going to lie. But um, it just got to a point where it just wasn't worth it. Like, So these printers, have, um, to keep up with demand, I have to turn these printers on first thing in the morning and they're basically running all day until last thing at night. Um, so these are in my house. I've done a whole uh, video on this setup. So we run Bitsbox from an outbuilder on my property out the back. That's fairly large, and um, but we probably will be outgrowing it within a couple of years. Um, during the summer months, we can have four printers set up along the back, um, keep the room quite well ventilated, um, and still be warm enough to print in. It's impossible in the winter. Absolutely impossible in the winter. It costs a fortune to keep that place heated these days, of course. So it's bad enough now. Um, there's no way I'll be heating it in the evenings as well. So um, they had to come indoors. And um, because I've only got this little thing. I mean I've only got two printers in at the moment. Unfortunately one of my Mars 3s was packed up. I do want to get a Mars 3 Pro. But I might hold out for a Mars 4. 
Um, but I've got Saturn 2 in there, and that's quite, quite, quite a large build plate. That and the little Anycubic DLP, which is printing like an absolute dream. Um, they're my go-tos at the moment. And without the grey tie stuff on there, um, it's, it's a lot easier to keep up with demand. I've still got quite a few to do, and it is just me doing this. Um, I mean, that's another thing as well. Like In regards to the GW stuff, I can just hire more people. I've got plenty of staff to keep up with all that. And with this, I don't really have time to sort of train it, train someone from scratch how to do the 3D printing thing. Not at all. And um, obviously then you've got all the um, dangers of fumes and allergic reactions, things like that. I don't really want to put a staff member through any of that. Um, and of course, again, we're in this little room. So it'd be a bit of a pain having two people in here. But um, then there's the fact that um, these printers, on average, we're printing three or four hours. So once you do all the other stuff, then there's just a big gap in the day. Which obviously for me, I'm doing other bits in the business. Um, but that's a, that's an issue. Like if you want to run a nine to five business, which we try to be, um, it's hard to do it three D printing because you because they take so long. You might be able to get a couple of print runs in your normal day to day, but if you get any failures or anything like that, then you've got to do them again. Or any sort of larger stuff that people buy, it might take longer. Um, so yeah, like I say, these print these printers end up going going in well into the evening. Um, that was just getting too much, and then on my days off, I'd be printing all day if I was in the house, just to keep up. That I think that was the biggest thing for me. Um, I'm doing this video on a day off, but um, but the printers aren't on now. Although I have had one print run this morning, but that's fine. I'm happy to just do the odd one. But I was finding like um, I only get my Sundays to myself. It's the only day of the week and that I can really make any solid plans so being indoors just printing or having the printers on spending an hour in the morning just trying to sort the printers out then another hour later on etc um yeah I don't, I don't want to be doing that and again not for any money really we probably have to be making 10 times more money for it to be worthwhile like I say it's the only day off to myself so so I do apologize if the thumbnail and title of this video feels a bit clickbaity, but I do feel like it's been a failed experiment, really. Um, we've just sort of dived into it. And I'm a bit like that with things. Um, when I get into something, I really, I really get into it, and I sort of dive in, and I do enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy it. But um, yeah, I just try to do too much too soon. So, like I say, the great type stuff might come back. I might do it in bundles and have it just print it first, then sell it. Maybe do it that way, because um, I know it's a lot of people really like their stuff. Um, we haven't got a year license, so I don't know how many months there's left on that. Probably not too many, but yeah, big lesson learned. Um, with our own unique stuff, I do want to do more of that. Um, so I really like the Sacred Templars and the Wastelanders range we've been coming up with. Um, these are conversion parts. Um, right, if you, um, feel free to check them out on our website. I will do some videos looking at them in more detail in the future as well. But as I said before, that was like the original intention of selling these stuff. Just selling the 3D printed resin was to have our own unique stuff. And then I sort of just got a bit a bit tied up and um, sort of going in with all these amazing companies. So as I said, um, this video will be offering some advice to people who uh, looking to sell 3D printed resin items and um, whether it be in their own store on eBay, Etsy, etc. Um, so there are a few ways you can go about finding um, files to sell. So the first way and um, what we've done with the unique stuff is we've had designers um, we've paid designers to design stuff for us. It's not cheap. Um, and also some bits I've actually um, designed myself um, just by learning Blender, following some tutorials online and things like that. Um, again, that takes up obviously a lot of time. Um, another way you can do it is find Patreons. Um, a lot of Patreons have merchant tiers, so like the Hellforge stuff we sell and the Atlan Forge, um, that's just through their Patreon, through their merchant tier. Um, there's loads more products for them I'd love to stock, but again, it's just trying not to do too much now. Um, which is a shame because um, there's, there's some amazing parts that both of them companies make so we'll gradually maybe just add little bits here and now I'm gonna see for the next sort of month or so 
um, how much I can sort of keep up with um, if it doesn't get on top of me too much and there is a scope for us to sell a bit more then I'll certainly will add some more products from their lines so that's two ways and um, the third way you can actually um, just buy Royal E3 items and um, CT Trader I think it is and um, that's a really good website for that and we got our wings that we sell on a on our site from there um i do recommend just getting in touch with the designers just make sure it's okay but um, normally if it's a royalty free license that does mean that you can um print print them designs without having to pay any extra licensing fees and normally these are with paid files so you do have to buy the, the stl anyway so the designers aren't losing out at all um they're still getting they're still getting paid um but yeah that's sort of the main three ways of finding stuff to sell and I think I'm um, obviously being a big store like us with a massive client base then obviously um the amount of um 3d parts we've sold 3d printed parts sorry that we've sold is obviously probably quite high compared to if we were just starting from scratch but you could be someone who's a lot better at advertising than us and you could quickly um, build up quite a customer base very quickly so yeah someone to be mindful of so I'm not sure there's too much else I can really say on the matter, but I am ha happy to answer any questions down below. Um, if you're someone who's thinking of getting into just 3D printing in general, or um, you want to sell stuff online, uh, if you have any troubleshooting questions, I'm, I will do a whole video on troubleshooting in the future, going forward. Yeah, any comments down below, um, feel free to ask any questions or leave any comments. So just to quickly um, recap then, um, if you are thinking of doing this yourself, then yeah, I would suggest printing some stuff out first, uh, seeing if the pre-supported stuff works for you. If not, then um, maybe um, support the items yourself, um, so they're suitable for your printers. Um, possibly you might be better off starting with a couple of smaller printers rather than one larger printer and that's something i was going to mention as well um because we started off with smaller printers and you know you can have them you can have one going while you're then cleaning up another one and um getting some st stuff done um in your slicing software for the other one and you can go simultaneously if you have any um errors or any, you know or if a screen packs in on one then you've got your backup one so rather than just having like a um, big satin like if that was to pack in and that was the only one then you're just out of action but if you had like two Mars threes for example which cost roughly the same price then if at least if one packs in you got your back up and you have a couple going at the same time so and um, that's something to be mindful of as well and I also recommend having spare vats and build plates and stuff as well um one thing I probably should have done a bit more as well um when we've had like failures in the past is maybe have a spare vat so while I'm sorting out the failures from one I can just put, pop another vat in and get another print on the go and then sort out the other one so that's it saves a bit of time and that's definitely um, something I would recommend doing maybe not at first because um, obviously it's a lot of investment to start start with but yeah that could be something well worth doing as you go forward as well so yeah just add them in and also make sure you have a um, a safe setup. So obviously we've got this grow tent and I've got a whole video on that. There's air purifier, extractor fans and everything like that. You can see the hose where it, um, all the fumes come out when when it's printing. Um, definitely mindful of that. You know it's something we could be doing for for years and years um, even if it's just going to be on this small scale and if you want to make a business out of that and do it for decades then yeah you definitely want to be safe because who knows what these fumes will do to us over the, the long term, even with as you know, um, even with um, some protection. And I think that's something what's really put me off trying to expand it further as well. Um, I don't particularly like the the fumes, even with this whole setup. Um, I, I'm just maybe just a bit paranoid about it all. I mean, I've got as much stuff on the go as I can in here to really keep the fumes at bay. Um, I know. Even having this open here just as a background for a video I'm not really too comfortable with so I'll be closing that all up again soon and turning the air purifier on in the room. 
Um, also, I have this desk in here, and that's something I'm going to take out. So, um, if these are going in the evenings, and I'm in here, or I need to go on the computer, I'll be I'll be elsewhere. And that gives me an opportunity, actually, to make a whole new desk, which I'm really excited about, and I'll do a video on that. So, if you want to see that in the future, then certainly hit that subscribe button. Um, I can't think of anything else left to say. This video is getting really long, actually, so I am going to leave it there. As I said, um, we can expand the conversation further in the comments if anyone has any questions, for sure. Um, I just wanted to just make this video just to let everyone know what the situation is. And, yeah, and just have, give some advice to anyone who is thinking of doing this as a business or even as a hobby. So, so yeah, um, hopefully it's been useful to someone. Um, if you have found it useful or at all interesting, then do feel free to hit that like button and yeah i'll see you all again in the next video thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already you can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel on the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our patreon page also thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon